I come from Durban, so yeah. spicy food is like my favorite. If it's not spicy, I cannot eat it. And you guys have different types of like peri peri sauces here. Fire. <laughs> it should have been Zuluman with some spice, not <laughs> Pau. <laughs> should have been, man. Yeah. 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 Hello guys, welcome to The Source. Today we have Nasty C, South African rapper. They call him Zuliman with some power. Yeah. Uh, multi award winning artist and today he's going to speak to us on The Source. Nasty C, welcome to The Source on Capital FM. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Let's kick off by telling us, you know, you have new music and tell us what it's all about and what you've been working on during this time. Um, so I dropped a song not so long ago, about a month ago, it's called Jack, doing pretty good man, people seem to love it, which is dope, you know what I mean, it's one of those songs that I really just dropped just to, just to put some music out, it had been a minute since I dropped something. Yeah. The song is pretty much just me about, um, it's about me growing up not having much, you know, rising to become someone who's able to provide for themselves and also for their family and their friends, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, promising myself never to go back to that situation yes ma um talking about how you grew up talk to us about you know how the fire to start rapping started i know you lost your mom pretty young sorry about that mm -hmm. and you grew up with your dad and your brother yeah, uh, yeah my brothers and sisters and your sisters yeah. so tell us about all that and music how it started um so um I think the first person I ever paid attention to as far as music goes was uh, T.I. Uh -huh. There's a video I saw of him playing in the car that I used to take to school. There was a bus I used to take to school with like a TV inside. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. We call yeah. them Ganya here in Kenya. I, I've, been, like I've been in one. Those pimped out matatus. Yeah, I've, I've been in one. Oh, yeah, yeah, pretty great. awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, that's the first time I really paid attention to music. And it just so happened to be hip hop. And I think I just fell in love with it instantly, you know. I, luckily, I had a computer at home. So I started making beats then, trying to like imitate them and stuff like that. And as I grew, um, my lyrics started to get better. My content started to make more sense. I started to rap about real life situations, about mm -hmm. uh, what was going on with me. And obviously, hitting puberty, that's like the peak of my yeah. drama, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I had like a lot of, a lot of, uh, stress to get off my chest you know what i mean and uh people seem to like it and gravitate to it it felt like i was speaking for a lot of people who didn't have you know what I mean? mm -hmm. stuff to record in it you know I mean? yeah. let's talk about uh the album that you released during you know the whole pandemic while yeah. we were dealing with everything yeah. zulu man with some power mm -hmm. that's a that's an album that took me quite a while to make man an album i'm really proud of it's very versatile it has a lot of different sounds in there a lot of different moods different um you know what I mean? Environments in there, yeah. if you can say so. It has something very special in there, which is two features from T.I. The reason I started rapping, I just said earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I have two features from him on there, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like a dream come true. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. It's an album that was supposed to mark something. It was uh, supposed to mark my uh, my debut into the, the global market. You know what I mean? So I wanted it to have my a bit of my culture in it, even if it's just a title and a verse. You know what I mean? So that the, the first time people hear me in like Asia or America yeah. or whatever, they know yeah. off the rip, they know I'm yeah. Zulu, I come from yeah. South Africa and then, you know what I mean? You've <laughs> achieved global success yeah. uh, at such a young age. You know, you've been signed to a major record label, Def Jam mm -hmm. and everything and uh, working with top artists like T.I. and Esap Fag and mm -hmm. Kaspar Nyovest and all these other artists that you've worked with. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to achieve all this at such a young age? Um, I think it's just me putting my passion into everything I do. Mm -hmm. I think when whoever out there in the world hears it and they can hear that I really, really love what I do, yeah. it immediately relates with them because if they love what they do, then they can tell, ah, this mm -hmm. kid was having a blast in the studio yeah, recording yeah, that, you know? Yeah. And they kind of catch my vibe and stuff like that. And then, um, I don't know, through the grace of God, man, people have really been liking my music and liking me enough to do songs with me, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's God, man. I don't even know what to tell you. Were you ever nervous? Plenty of times. Oh, plenty of times. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Especially when I meet these guys for the first time, you know? Because when yeah. we make the songs, like, through emails, mm -hmm. I'm just, like, happy, you know? I might be nervous a little bit and thinking, oh, I hope he really likes this song, but as soon as they send the verse back, we're good. Mm -hmm. And then when I meet them for the first time, I'm always just like, man, these guys are superstars, you know? I don't really have that superstar persona. I'm just a kid, you know what I mean? <laughs> but then when I meet them, um, to my surprise, they're all just regular guys mm -hmm. with a lot of success, a lot of talent. 
but they're regular people, you know, and I like that. Yeah. yeah. You say you're just a kid, but yeah. a very talented kid. Oh, thank you. And talk to us about what you think of the growth of the music industry in the continent. It has grown tremendously, man. And I think people are yet to see the best of us. You know what I mean? We have yeah. so many different flavors. We offer the world so much richness. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When it comes to culture, when it comes to history, when it comes to just like our music being so natural and be, like it just, it comes with us. It's like this thing is in our blood. You could take away all the equipment, we would still make the best music. Yes, you know what we I mean? can. Yeah, that's, that's just facts. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. I think this is, um, it's been long overdue, man. I love how, especially Afrobeast, has just been leading the wave and, and just, it, it took the whole world by storm, you know? Mm. It should have happened a long time ago, really, to be honest, but I like that it really happened and um, the biggest artists in the world have no choice but to bow down and like respect it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And everyone wants to be part of the Afrobeats Everybody. movement. Everybody. 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 Yeah. Uh, what makes you come back to Kenya more and more times? What is that special thing about Kenya that you like? The number one thing, which is something that's very important to me. It might seem like a small thing to other people, but to me, something that's very important is the way people treat each other. I like that people over here are not taken away by the whole social media life. People don't see you and immediately just start doing some weird things. Really? You know? Nah, man. People have been treating me like a normal human being. I oh love that. People are really kind, really respectful. Um, it's beautiful, obviously. The weather is amazing. The food is nice. The music is dope. It's just a vibe, man. You are a young uh, rapper mm -hmm. and you have all these people looking up to you. You have fans, you have social media, you have all these things. Mm -hmm. How do you keep sane? How do you keep, you know, the, the nonsense and not really nonsense, it but... It is nonsense. No, no, <laughs> you know, like all the other extra stuff yeah. and you getting to do <laughs> what you love yeah, yeah, yeah. and just keeping yourself pure so, and yeah. sane and being true to yourself. Luckily for me, I was raised by a very strict father who made sure that no matter what happens or no matter what endeavors I take in life, my morals stay with me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to see through all the shenanigans that happen in the industry, this crazy industry that we're in. You know what I mean? So I, I keep away from stuff like that. The people I have closest to me have been with me for the longest. My, my manager is my big brother. This person raised me pretty oh, wow. much. Yeah. Beautiful. My photographer is my best friend since I was like what, like 15, 14, something like that? Oh, yeah. My girlfriend travels with me. She's been with me since I was 15 or so. Yeah. Uh, my DJ is my best friend who's been with me since I was 16. You know what I mean? So these people, they know me. They know me without the fame, the, the, the money, and none of this stuff. They know who I am at core. You know what I mean? So if I ever change, they'll be the first ones to say, you, you stop it, like, get back in line type thing. You know what I mean? And us being able to keep each other in check just like that, we, it's, we can never go wrong, you know? Anytime any one of us tends to like sway a little bit, mm. you know, we know it happens. You know what I mean? This life that we live is crazy. Having people scream at you in your face and, and love you so much every single day, it could drive you crazy. It could boost your ego to a place where it's not supposed to go. Yeah. So these people make sure that it doesn't happen to me. You know what I mean? Let's talk about your thoughts on streaming and how you guys are maybe making money from it yeah. and because it's something that not most people are aware of how yeah. it works and how you put yeah. your music out there and how uh, listenership and streaming works to enable you to do better and become a greater musician yeah 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 oh yeah that's that's one of the things that um, every single artist right now should be on uh, honestly you know what I mean um, yeah. The people that run the tech world have made it very easy for us artists to make money without, you know, having to slave for anybody. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there's there's things like there's platforms like Apple Music, there's Deezer, there's Spotify, Boomplay. there's Boomplay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like people can people can um, access your music easily from every single corner of the world, and you could your life could change. Yeah. One good song and your whole life could change. You know what I mean? It's just that um, a, lot of, a lot of artists don't really trust the system. A lot of them just haven't been educated enough for them to trust it and know how to work it by themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is, it, it, I can tell you right now, it doesn't take too much knowledge. It's not like going to school for six years to mm -hmm. understand it. You could literally understand this thing in like a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I encourage everyone to, to go out there, man. Learn about publishing. Learn about royalties. Learn about 
um, like licensing your music and stuff like that. Talking about Boomplay, they just informed me about your streaming record, yeah. which is at 8.8 .8 million streams. Yeah, awesome. And, you know, in South Africa, you've been known to be like a streaming giant for like the last couple of years. Yeah. How do you feel about this? It feels amazing, man. I feel celebrated. I feel loved. I feel like people are liking my music. I hope to continue making music that they love. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, man, it's dope. Are you yeah. working with any East African soon? There's none that have been confirmed, but um, I want to work with Xenia for sure. She's been working with my artist, ah. Roline. Yeah, ah. yeah. And there's another vocalist that was at one of their shows. Mm -hmm. They did a show uh, the other day, this one Sunday. And mm -hmm. I heard a lot of great artists go up there and sing, man. I like mm -hmm. singers. I really like singers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might be doing like two features just before I leave. Yeah. Let's talk about your acting debut in Blood and Water mm -hmm. on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, how was it getting into the acting space? It was an experience, definitely one to remember, but it's not my passion, you know, so it might not ever happen again. But um, it definitely was an experience, man. I, I, I appreciate them even letting me be on their screens like that. Yeah. I definitely wasn't worthy of being there, but they let me do it, which is really dope, man, really cool. Uh, I got to see the insides of acting a little bit, you know, the techniques and stuff like that, different views of it. It was pretty awesome. But I'm pretty sure you've never gotten booed. No? Booed? No. But I, I, I have struggled on stage. Like mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes you'll get booked in a place where yeah. you don't have that many fans, right? And they like a certain type of music. But the promoter loves you and his kids love you. So, yeah. And since he has the money to book you, he books you. And you get up there and people mm. are just like... Nah, fam. Yeah, I went to this other show in, uh, in Limpompo, I think. Yeah. And yeah. They, uh, the, the gospel artists over there, they just tore it up, man. I went up there. And you're like... My pants are sagging. I'm, I'm bouncing on stage and stuff. Everyone's looking at me like, <laughs> man, who is this? Just get this guy off stage. You know what I mean? So that was that was that was embarrassing, but it was a lesson right there. You know, you have to always read your crowd. I yeah. could have done it better. I could have picked yeah. better songs. I could have, you know what I mean, presented myself a bit better. But I learned that day, for sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. What are the lessons that you've learned so far, uh, overall, like since you started your career? Not to be so open about stuff. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. This industry we're in right now is is everything is about a headline. You know what I mean? You might say one thing and people find a way to twist it yeah. so that the headline could be more interesting and enticing, I guess. You know what I mean? I learned not to be so open about my personal life also. People just like to dissect it and, and judge me based off of it. I learned that social media is not all that. You know, it's really just a crazy world out there. Uh, I don't even use social media like that anymore. I learned that just be, by being my true self, mm -hmm. I can acquire and conquer way more than if I were to put on this, oh, I'm a superstar, I'm a rapper persona. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all that stuff. I tried it when I was coming up. I was like, man, I have to be the rapper. When people look at me, they have to see a rapper. Uh, mm -hmm. But now it's just like, I realize that that could just make you go crazy. Because when you have to put on this image every single day, you lose a whole chunk of who you really are. You know what I mean? I had that little phase where I was just like, okay, cool, I'm tired of this. Who am I? And I couldn't answer that question for myself. It was a really sad moment. And then uh, I found myself again, and I don't think I'm ever going back to putting on the, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm just a guy, man. I'm just a guy. You're just true like to any, yourself. Like any other guy. You know what I mean? I just happen to be blessed with uh, this whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just peeped your tattoo on your neck, yeah. and you've mentioned, you know, like how those <coughs> artists, uh, the gospel artists who killed it in Limpompo, yeah. and I see you have something like a Bible, and yeah. wings, yeah. and I can see many others. Yeah. I, I don't know what the inspo is for all of them, yeah. but just tell us a little bit about little bit. you getting all this ink. Uh, ink to me is not like how everyone else sees it. People see it as like this thing, yet like you're a rebellious child and this and that. That's not it. Mm -hmm. So this right here is this, right? Mm, this Ivy is Sun. Ivy Sun, right? I made yeah. this up. I gave this name to myself, and I, I used my mother's name. Yeah. to make it. So my mother's name yeah. is Ivy. Yeah. So I just call myself Ivy Son, like Ivy's son. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And this is Ivy Son. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. This is the official company logo. Yes. So I made it in a company mm -hmm. and that's the official logo. Mm -hmm. um, this right here is an eye, right? Yeah. That's crying. 
uh, it's it's so it's it's like a you can think of it as like a piece of land type thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Like a mother nature of some sort. Yeah. Right. So the trees here are dead, right? Yeah. Because so, they don't have any leaves on them. Right. Yeah. Okay. And the spirit is flying free. Okay. Right. And yeah, it's crying. It's, it's crying because of the loss, obviously. Uh -huh. But with its tears, it's growing a brand new mm -hmm. fresh tree. This oh, is the okay. ivy tree, and this is supposed to symbolize what my mother did when she passed uh -huh. on. You know what I mean? It's okay, sad that's that. Beautiful. Yeah, this whole sad part is that we couldn't get to spend time together. I don't remember yeah. any moments from her. Yeah. But she gave birth to a whole new blossoming. Uh, on my neck, this is supposed to symbolize a new page. So this is supposed to symbolize that. It's like freedom of, I don't know, creating a new page or whatever. That's a beautiful way to honor your mother. Yes, right. May she continue resting in peace. Yes. Uh, and she would be proud of how you turned out, definitely. I You're doing so. great things. I hope she is, man. Okay. What is next for Anastasi? I hope I can oh. continue to make people happy and, 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 I don't know, just put a smile on their faces and joy in their hearts through my music, really. That's, that's all I really hope for and hope that um, I get more successful as I do that. And, be able to change my life and my, my family's life and my friend's life even more than I have already. That was a little deep to, to put it on a lighter <laughs> note. <laughs> I yeah. have, I'm trying to finish up an album yeah. this year. Hopefully I could drop it by the end of this year, hopefully. Okay. So you guys will be hearing all different yeah. types of flavors from me, you know what I mean? Hey, what's up, man? My name is Nasty C. And I used to have Jack in the fridge in the bank. I'm not going back. I had bed bugs, I had roaches and rats. But I'm not going back, you see, making this cheese cannot be this easy. There must be a catch. I'm spending and making it back, so I guess it's balancing that. If you don't know what that is right there, those are the lyrics to the hook for my brand new song called Jack. Make sure you go out there and you support. And make sure you stay locked into the source, man. Very good people. I enjoyed this interview. Thank you so much. For more content, make sure you subscribe and tap in. Yes, sir.